Good morning, Eastside Youth. Hopefully you guys are doing well and are able to um, stay indoors as much as you can today. Um, if you haven't already seen it, this uh, video will hopefully explain what was going on. Um, we we uh, had to cancel church services this morning just due to air quality and not wanting people um, out and about. Uh, also, there's very, very low visibility. Uh, we, we took a short drive this morning. And it, yeah, it's pretty low visibility. So uh, um, yeah, there's no, as you already know, because uh, you're not there, there's no Sunday morning youth this morning. Um, but one of the one of the things I mentioned back in March and April um, is is one day we would look back on the beginning of all of what happened with COVID, and um, we would we would look back on it and be able to see some good. So today we get to benefit from that. Um, we we have in place, and I have stuff able, and 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 there's a precedent that we've already done online videos for when we were not able to meet due to the virus, and so now we're not able to meet due to smoke, and we're going to do this online. So um, you'll you'll have a Sunday morning youth video that's happening currently, uh, and I'll also have something for you guys this evening, uh, and I'll post that around three or four. Also, um, right, as of right now. Uh, I'm planning to be uh, available and I'm going to kind of let, you know, the I'll put a discussion on the Facebook group and let you guys kind of drive it. Uh, Christian Domini sent me a link. Shout out, Christian. Uh, it's this game called Among Us. Um, and what's really cool is in here you can do this online and you can set up a private room down there at the bottom. Um, and so we have the option. It's kind of like Mafia. So if we want to do that this afternoon, we can do that. Or um, if we want to do some Jackbox, uh, we can do that too. So we're, we're going to try to be available to hang out and do some sort of activity together around four, um, around normal youth group time. Uh, and uh, there will also be a video uh, for the lesson tonight as well. So uh, we're, we're, we still got youth group. It just looks a little different. Um, and uh, yeah, thank God that we, we did these type things uh, four or five months ago and that uh, the, the move over is easy when it happens. Um, and so today we're actually, was the first week back to Sunday morning youth. Uh, we took last week off, and by that I mean I took last week off. Um, and so we had finished Second Kings, First and Second Kings, um, and at the end of Second Kings, the people of Israel and Judah have um, been taken captive and they've been shipped off to Babylon. Um, They've, they've been taken into captivity. And so last week or two weeks ago, I told you guys, yeah, we're just going to keep going. We're going to jump right into Chronicles. And then I started to think about it. Um, and we will get to the book of Chronicles, but we're not doing that now. Um, the book of Chronicles was written much later. Um, and it was written to kind of look back on all that had happened and comment then. And so to get there, we're going to go through what happened. Uh, and that leads us into the book of Daniel. Um, and when you guys hear the book of Daniel, you probably think of like two greatest hits, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or um, as, as one of my one of my church kids I used to help with is Meshach, Yorshach, and Abednego. Uh, they get thrown into the fiery furnace. That's like the first story that we hit that's like one of the standouts. Um, the second one is, of course, Daniel and the lion's den. Um, we're going to talk about those, but we're going to do the whole book of Daniel. Um and what you're going to find out is those two greatest hits are greatest hits because they make really good stories. And a lot of the rest of Daniel is kind of weird. Um, there's lots of visions. There's lots of kings. Um, there's lots of moving parts. And at the center of this story is Daniel and his three friends. Uh, and so that's who we're going to kind of learn about today. Um, I'm excited to go through Daniel and we will just keep moving from there. So today we're going to be in Daniel chapter one. Um, it's Bidding to start at the beginning, so we're going to do that, uh, and, and I'll just start reading. I'll stop and discuss some things as we go here. So Daniel chapter 1, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God, and he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish of good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace, and to teach them 
the literature, and the language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate, and of the wine he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. And among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them new names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. Um, so we're just going to pause there. So this sets the scene. Um, we talked about how last week they got taken in captivity, and this story brings us up to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, uh, and when we start talking about Babylon and Chaldea, that it's it's similar, um, mostly the same region. But when you have these, when we took the the captive, the worship pieces of the temple, <clears throat> hauled them away, he said. Now bring me the smart dudes and the good looking guys and all the people that are going to be fitting to be in my presence in, in the court of the king. Um, and so that's what happens. And that's how Daniel, um, <clears throat> Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah get hauled off. Um, it tells us that they were educated for three years um, and they were taught to, to uh, not just read Babylonian Chaldean, they were taught the literature, the stuff of the culture. Um, so these guys were kind of like, um, they were taken from their country, Judah, Israel, and they were brought over to Babylon and they said, okay, culture crash course, here's our literature and you're going to need to learn the language if you're going to be around the king. Um, and what's interesting is they did it. Uh, it seems to me that Daniel and these three guys, they, they did that. They learned the language, they learned the culture, um, and they're a part of it. So when we're, when we're starting to talk about Daniel, one of the things you have to remember is this is life outside the promised land. The, the people of Israel, they had reached the promised land way, way back. And we read about that in Numbers and Deuteronomy and Joshua. Um, and now they've been in the land, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings. And now they've been taken out of the land, just as God told them would happen in Deuteronomy. And, and the story of Daniel is like a case study of these guys um, in not the land, and how are they going to handle being the people of God now that they're displaced and they're taken away from their home, the place that God dwells, um, the place of promise. Uh, and when we first read this, we if we stopped where we stopped, and we're not going to, we're going to keep going, it, it would be tempting to think like, oh shoot, like these guys are just fully assimilating into this Babylonian culture. Um, but as we keep reading, that's not the case. So let's keep going. Uh, verse 8, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs and said to the chief of the eunuchs, uh, and the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord, the king who assigned you food and drink. Why should he see that you are in worse condition than the youths who are of your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, uh, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants accordingly to what you see. So he listened to them in this manner and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the stewards took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them only vegetables. So um, this is a relief because lest we, sorry, excuse me, get to that first point, we think, oh shoot, like Daniel and his homies, they're jumping right in. Here we're told that Daniel um, and, and he advocates for his three friends. They don't want to eat the king's food. They say, no, we don't want it. And the reason they don't want it is it was very likely that what this king had was a uh, dietary things that were uh, that they were not supposed to eat according to the the uh, the law. Um, pork, shellfish, you know, all those type things that they were not supposed to eat according to Jewish law. Daniel's like, no, we ain't eating it. The other part is there's no telling if those things were not sacrificed to the gods that are discussed in the beginning of this chapter. So either way, 
Daniel and his friends are like, no meat, no wine, veggies and water. Um, and man, first of all, the fact that these three guys are still care enough about the law and about pleasing their God to step up and say, actually, we're not going to eat that food, which would probably give us lots of energy. Um, we're going to choose to do what we know and believe is right based on what our God has told us and not eat the king's food. Um, first of all, that's big. Remember, they're away from God, and yet they still care. These, th these four guys still care about pleasing their God and doing what is right. Thumbs up. Awesome. The next thing is this, this guy who is in charge of them and overseeing them, he's worried because he's like, okay, Daniel and friends, I get that you don't want to eat it, but you, you don't get it. Nebuchadnezzar is a grumpy dude. And if he sees that you are not eating, he's going to assume that I have done something and I'm going to be in trouble. So why don't you just eat it for me? And Daniel and his friends, they, they kind of empathize with him. Okay, how about this? Give us 10 days. Give us 10 days, and if after 10 days we actually genuinely look worse off, then, then we'll, we'll be, you'll be the judge then. So give them food, uh, give them veggies and water for 10 days, and at the end of 10 days, um, it comes back and, and it's, it says that they were like beefier than the dudes that were eating the king's meat and drinking his wine. Um, and so the steward took away the meat. He didn't give it to him, and he let him eat veggies and water. Uh, he allowed them to practice their religion, to follow their God in a land where, assumably, you know, there, it was thought in their brain, like, maybe God's not here with us. And yet Daniel and his friends are allowed to pursue and practice their religion and pursue their God in a foreign land. And that's going to be really important because when we get through Daniel and we start talking about Ezra and Nehemiah, where God is at is going to, to not change a bit, but they're going to learn something new. Much like when we talk about Exodus and it was viewed like, well, we're in slavery and, and where's God at? And, and the big thing of Exodus is God is here and there. He is with you and he's also working ahead of you to free you. We're going to learn something similar in these, in these exile um, books of the Bible. Um, so then verse 17, as for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the end of the time, when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king spoke with them, and among all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. And in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the enchanters that were in his kingdom. And Daniel was there until the first year of King Cyrus. Um, so, first of all, this tells us, this, this gives us a clue that this is, again, much like a lot of the Bible, it's not written in real time. Because we already know about the coming King Cyrus while we're still talking about the current King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, however, it says that God gave them learning and skill in all literature. And he blessed Daniel with understanding and visions and dreams, and that their wisdom was greater than the magicians and the enchanters. And this, this kind of echoes back to Exodus and the Pharaoh and Moses and Aaron. And, and Pharaoh keep giving them these tests, and Moses and Aaron do these miracles, and Pharaoh does some of the miracles, but Moses and Aaron consumes and takes over and is, is different and better than their miracles. And we get that same picture with Daniel a little bit where Daniel's able to understand and interpret and do things that these magicians and enchanters that King Nebuchadnezzar had were not. Um, and so God blessed Daniel and his three friends. And whether he blessed them to bless them or he blessed them out of faithfulness, um, it, he did it because God is setting something up with Daniel and his three friends. So it says that Daniel was there, that he was in like the court of the king um, until the first year of King Cyrus. So this introduces that there's going to be another king eventually, and that's going to be important next week as we get to chapter two. Um, but this week we, we, we met um, Daniel and his three friends. We find out that um, even in a land that is not the promised land, even in a land where this is not the land that God gave them, we still have a group of people who want to follow, worship, and please 
the God of the promise. And that's going to be huge as we start to look at who Daniel and these three guys are. Um, so that's Daniel chapter one. Hope you guys are well. Um, also, just at the end of this video, a reminder, we're going to be um, trying to do either some Jackbox or some sort of uh, game together online around four. And there will be a video with um, the beginning of our of our uh, lesson in Hebrews this evening. Um, also, take note, uh, we're supposed to have a bike ride this upcoming Saturday. Um, and if, if the smoke and the things continue, we will be probably either moving that or canceling it. Um, but either way, we will find something for the end of September for sure. But um, I know it's, it's kind of a hectic time. There's a lot of worry. Um, and so I'm just going to close in prayer. And then I will see you guys later this afternoon. Let's pray. Dear God, um, we just thank you for this time that we can spend together online. I know um, we've enjoyed being back in person, um, but God, we thank you that if anything came from all the stuff that happened in March and April, that that we have the ability and the the things set up to meet online, and it's it's you know it's not hard. We don't have to like set a whole bunch of new standards up. Um, God, I just pray for these fires. I pray for um, the people fighting them. I pray that you'd keep them safe. I pray that um, we would get rain, God. Uh, it's coming. I pray that it's big rain. And uh, I just pray that, that these fires can get turned back and put out. Um, God, I pray for the people who have lost property, lost loved ones, um, lost livelihood. God, I pray that you'd be with them. Um, give them peace, even though there's there's it's tough to find peace sometimes. Um, God, I just pray again that... Uh, those who are near these fires, uh, that they would be safe, that you would give them discernment on when is the right time to scoot and get out of there. Um, and I just pray that, that at this time we would look for ways to look out for each other, God. We love you and thank you. It's your name we pray. Amen. All guys. I love you. I will see you later.